In this video, we're going to look at printf, scanf, and scanf. Now, a lot of times in C++, we use C in, C out, and then for scanf, string streams. But the old C way was to use printf, scanf. So I'm going to show you how to use these because they more resemble the lower level of C, C++, that sort of stuff. And you actually get to feel what's going on. And it's not that difficult. So I don't see out see in using the IO manipulators and things like that can get a little bit challenging to understand or recalling all these different IO manipulators that you're going to use. So in this case, we're going to use what are called formatters or specifiers. And that's exactly how we're going to print a number. So our learning objectives today are to be able to use printf. So that's essentially C out, scanf, which is essentially C in, and then S scanf, which is essentially an input string stream, an I string stream. Understand formatting specifiers, so that's what I was telling you. If we want to change the text into something else like a number, a string, or something like that, we use a formatting specifier. Understand the modifiers to them, so we can actually left justify, right justify fields, that sort of stuff, just like what we can do with IO manipulators. Be able to left justify, right justify a formatting field, be able to specify a minimum number of characters. So like I said, it's just like set width, left, right, that sort of stuff. So in general, we include a header file called CSTDIO. And it's not that big of a deal to actually use, but CSTDIO, if you take a look at it, looks something like this. Notice I don't have a using namespace. It's not required. You can put it in there, but CSTDIO is not in the standard namespace, so it just doesn't do anything. So CSTDIO means this came from the old C library, and it's not C++. Now we function, and we can use it just like C++, but the functions we're going to use are printf, scanf. So let's take a look at what printf is first. So printf will automatically print to the console. And so it doesn't say console printf or something like that, but it's assumed that it's going to the console. And what we do is the very first parameter we're going to give it is a C style string, so a character array. And it's going to be specifying the parameters that we want. So hello world. So we can type any text that we want. Now there's a specific a special type of text called a formatter that starts with a percent sign. That's when printf knows, uh-oh, I need to change this into whatever they specify. So right now, all this is going to do, notice there's no percent signs in there. So whenever we run it, we get hello world. And that's exactly what we expect. So that's just like C out, C out, open quotes, hello world, close quotes, backslash and whatever. And so that's essentially what we're doing here. So let's take a look at these formatters. So notice that if I just print out hello world, it prints out hello world. It will print out whatever you give it until it hits a percent sign. And that is a format or a specifier. And in that case, what it's going to do is it's going to take that out of your string and replace it with whatever you want, like an integer, a string, a floating point, that sort of stuff. So we have several different formatters. We have the percent %d, which you might have been familiar with. That stands for decimal. So that's just a base 10 signed integer and it's 32 bits. So notice that all these are gonna be 32 bits unless we add a modifier called L, stands for long. So percent %LD is long decimal, which is a signed 64-bit integer. Percent %U stands for unsigned. We'll see what unsigned are later. LU is a 64-bit unsigned. X prints in base 16, so in hexadecimal, so that's kind of nice. We'll actually get into hexadecimal and see what that is. LX prints a 64-bit. So notice whenever we want 64 bits, we put the L in front of the formatter. Percent %f is for a 32-bit float, which is just float. And percent %lf is a 64-bit float, which is a double data type. Uh, percent %p prints out a pointer. It's in hexadecimal and just prints out whatever that pointer is. Percent %s is a C-style string. And percent %c is a single character. Now, we're going to use these specifiers to both output, so using printf, and to input using scanf. So let's take a look at an example. Now, I've got this example here, but I'm going to show you a different example just so that you don't have the same example twice. So in this case, let's say we input a number. So int i equals 100. So let's go ahead and include io string. This is not very good to do. Stick with one, but I just want to show you using something you're probably already familiar with. So let's get rid of that. So c and i. I just want to show you the power of, of printf because it actually, I in my judgment, it's a lot easier because we don't have greater than greater than signs or less than less than signs everywhere. So if you remember, percent %d is a 32-bit integer and it's signed. So in this case, if you'll notice, int i is the data type that I want to print out. 
that's going to be a 32-bit signed integer. So essentially what's going to happen is notice this percent %d is sitting right here. What's going to happen is printf is going to look at the percent %t, remove it, and then replace it with i. So how we specify i is we add a comma at the end and then specify i. So this is what's called a variadic argument. We can specify as many as we want, just separated by commas. So if I had percent %d, percent %d, something like this. Okay, so notice we have 1%. 2%, 3%, 4 5%. So we actually need five different specifiers at the end. So I can go 10, 20, 30, 40. And the way this is going to do it is it's going to go from left to right in the string. So this first percent %d will go to the first specifier. This second percent %d will go to the second, which is 10, third, and so on and so forth. So what we should see is whatever the user entered, followed by 10, 20, 30, and 40. So let's see what happens. So it says enter value, I'm going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We enter that, it says you entered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the value. Notice there's no percents in there because it yanked that out and replaced it with whatever the value you want. So it can get a little bit hairy if you don't add enough specifiers. So in here, I took one out. So we have four spec we have five specifiers, but only four arguments to print at. If we take a look at this, notice we get no warnings, no nothing. So the most of the formatting most of the compile strings that I'll give you have wall, stands for warn all, give me all the warnings. Okay, so now that I, we did wall, which says warn me for everything, notice that line 10 says format percent %d expects a matching integer argument. So remember we specified four in the arguments, but we actually have five specifiers. And so it's saying, hey look, this percent %d needs an int, even though it doesn't. And so that's the thing to remember is dash w stands for warn all means give me all the warnings. And so that's a great way to keep yourself safe. But if you notice, if I do not specify a wall, we don't get the warning at all. So be very careful with that. Okay, so that's essentially what's going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, you sort of have to memorize what these are. Now, you don't have to memorize them all because you know if we put an L in front of it, that's how we go from 32 bits to 64 bits. So percent %d, percent %u, percent %x, percent %f and percent %s. Those are really the ones you're going to use most often, but there are percent %c for character, percent %p for pointer, that sort of stuff. So let's take a look at the modifiers. So once again, like IO manipulators, that's what we're calling the modifiers. So we can actually call these the IO manipulators, but essentially we'll want field widths, we want precision on our floating point and things like that. So if you'll notice here, I have an int i equals 100 right there. And I do percent %10d. So we know things that go between the percent and the d, which is the specifier, modify it. So remember, percent %ld will modify percent %d to make it for a 64-bit integer. But we can actually specify a number, and that number is going to be a field width, just like set w in an IO manipulator. So in this case, if we leave off, if it's a positive integer, it's going to be a right justified field, in this case, 10 characters wide. So everything will be right justified 10 characters wide. If we specify a negative number, it's going to be a left justified field. So really the only way to specify right and left is if it's a positive, right, or if it's a negative, left. And yet the number still comes after that and tells you it's going to be a 10 character field. So if we take a look at this, I print these little pipes in here just so you can see the actual formatting width. So you see we have a pipe here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so in this case, we actually print out all 10 fields. So in this case, the 100 will get right justified that takes up three fields and then we have seven before that to give us a total of 10. So the same thing happens over here, except it's going to be left justified because it's a negative number. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's a field width of 10. So once again, that's just how we do an IO manipulator. Let's go ahead and see an example of that. Remove IO string, get rid of that. Okay, so right now I'm going to just put in a number I equals 100. Well, let's do one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's 10 different numbers. Let's do 5D. Okay, so just like an IO manipulator using set width, 
Notice that my I is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. So that's 10 characters wide. So it's going to be wider than what we actually are specifying, which is negative 5D. So just like the I manipulator, the 5D is a minimum value. So if we don't have 5, it's going to expand that for us. But if we have more, it's not going to do anything. It's as if it's not even there. It's as if it's a percent D. So let me do this for you just to prove it to you. And we'll do a percent D on the next line. And when we run it, we get the exact same value. Why? Well, because remember, this is 10 characters wide, and we're only specifying five characters. Since it exceeds the width, nothing happens. It just, that formatter goes away. So now let's say negative 15. Now there's a difference. So we, now we have five characters that it has to make up. And notice it makes them up. How do we know? Well, we don't know because it's on the left justification. So let's go ahead and make it a right justification just to... There we go. So now it's on a right justification, and you can see that there are five characters being skipped. Why? Because we have 10 characters, and in this case, 10 characters being taken up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. And then on the left hand side, we have five additional characters because we specified the field width of 15. So that's how you do manipulators in printf. And you can add these manipulators to anything percent u, lu. So if I wanted a long, I would do something like this. Okay, so now it's a long. We specify 15 LD. And, well, because we warned here, I forgot to change this one to an LD. And it does warn us. It says, hey, look, percent D expects an integer. But remember, this is plenty of space to fit into an integer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 0. So it actually doesn't matter. Now, if it exceeds that space, that's when we're going to have, start having problems here. But notice what happens. When I did the LD, it still justified it and everything like that. So that's how we actually do manipulators using print F, scan F, that sort of stuff. So let's take a look at modifiers and how we can modify the way that fixed notation outputs a floating point number, whether it be 64 bits for LF or a 32 bit number with just F. So if we take a look at the screen, we can see that we have 0.2F right here. And what that's gonna say, as soon as we see the decimal inside of the percent and then the, the specifier, which is F in this case for floating point, that is going to provide us a fixed notation, the number of decimal points to the right I'm sorry, the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. And so what this is going to do is we see that the floating point is 100 decimal 2572. So let's take a look at this code and see what it does for us. So 17283, let's see what happens. So remember it's percent and then you're going to add a decimal and that's going to say here's the number of precision or the precision that we want. So it's just like set precision in IO manipulators. So let's do two. and let's output i. So let's take a look at what that does. And also gives me one decimal seven three. So if we take a look at the code again, we see that we have one decimal seven two eight three. So that's interesting in a couple ways. Number one, notice it gives us two digits to the right of the decimal place, just like fixed notation and set precision does with the auto manipulators. Second thing is, is notice that we should usually be seven two if it truncates, but in this case, since there's an eight next to the two, it rounds up. And it rounds up just like we normally would. Five and above rounds up to the next, rounds down if it's four or below. So as you can see, if we use the decimal two, the precision, just like IO manipulators, it rounds and does not truncate. And so that is a way where we can specify the number of decimal digits that we want. So we can, we can actually combine these, like in this case, we have 10 decimal two. So if we did something like that, So in this case, let's say 20, just so it gets way over there. What this is gonna do is the way to read this is the percent says, okay, I'm going to do something. I want printf to do something and I don't want it to output this directly. So what this is gonna be is going to be a right justified field, 20 characters wide. And then the point two tells us we want two decimal points of precision. And the F tells us it's gonna be a 32 bit float. So let's take a look at what this does. And notice it moves everything over to the right and we have one decimal seven three. So it still rounds it and we have one decimal seven three. So here's one thing I wanna show you. So if we look at one decimal seven three, that's four characters. So let's put four characters here in a right justified field and see what happens. Okay, notice we get one decimal seven three. Okay, well let's move it into a five. 
and notice we get it spaced over 1.73. So the important thing to know here is that the decimal actually takes up one of those characters. So it's not just the numbers, it's the actual decimal as, as well. And if there was a negative sign in front of it, it would actually take that up. So let's take a look at a negative sign. Okay, so one, so it'd be negative one decimal seven three. So that's five total digits or five total characters. And notice it takes up those five. So let's move this to six and see if it moves it over by one. Notice it moves it over by one. So everything that gets output is counted as one of the characters that we want to output. So that's important to know. So once again, what we do is we specify the precision using the decimal point, and we specify the field width using uh, before the decimal point. Now remember, we don't have to use the decimal point if we don't want to. So these escape sequences start with the percent sign and end with the specifier, whether it be F, D, or U. So let's move on and see how we can actually use strings. So remember, this is a C style system, so we can't use the string in C++. We have to use C style strings. So if we take a look at a C style string, remember it's just a character array. So let's do char my string. Okay, so we have H-E-L-L-O space, so that's six, W-O-R-L-D, uh, so that's five. So that's 11 total characters that we're going to have whenever we do hello world. So if you remember the specifier for a string is an S. So let's take a look at what that's going to do, just vanilla wise. And notice it prints out hello world, just like we thought. So that is a good way, so notice it's going to print out all the characters in here and then add the new line character in the printf. So let's take a look at what happens whenever we do something like decimal two. Okay, H-E. So what happens? So it's contextual what that decimal does. So if it's an F, it uses the precision. So that's the precision of it. If it's a percent %S, which is a string, it's going to say, here's how many characters of the string we want to print out. Because I did point two, it's only going to print out two characters, which is H-E. We could also use, let's say, nine, well it's 11, so let's do 15 and see what happens there. So once again, we can move that all the way out to the right. And remember HE, even though it's hello world for the entire string, the only thing that is counted against that field width is H and E because we said print out just two characters of the string. We don't have to put the point two in there. We can just leave it off and it's going to print the entire string, or we can specify how many characters of the string that we want to print. And so strings are fairly straightforward. Uh, one thing you don't ever want to do is print out a string like this. And actually it'll warn you if you try to do something like that. Well, I guess not, Never mind. But you don't wanna put the string directly into printf. Why? Well, the reason is, especially if you're inputting data from the user, they can actually put the percent %d and stuff like that in there and actually look around your computer and it's inherently insecure in that case because you don't control what is being examined by the system. Instead, the user does. So let's take a look at scanning. So everything we've done up till now has been printing to the console. And in case you didn't realize, printf prints to the console. And so we can actually use printf to print to files and things like that. It's actually called fprintf. But uh, now we want to look at how to actually input. So input is done by something called scanf. It's included in the same portion, so CSTDIO has this in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to say num bytes, because what scanf returns, and printf by the way, we just don't really care what it is, is it returns the number of fields that were able to be printed out. In printf, it's the number of characters, and in scanf, it's the number of fields. So let's take a look at what scanf is going to do. So let's say printf, enter a value, an operator, and another value. Okay, so we're gonna write a calculator like one plus two or something like that. So now what we're going to do is we need a value, an operator, and another value. Now, generally what we can do is with the value, we want integers, so let's say left operand, right operand. And what about the operator? Well, it's gonna be one single character. However, just like CN, it stops at white space. So what we really want it to do is just like CN, if we did an input on a character, it would actually grab that white space. We don't want that to happen, so let's actually make a string called operator. Now, if, well, we can't, so it's gonna be OP. So in this case, what we need to understand is what is actually being stored inside of strings. For C style strings, it's the data followed by what's called the terminator. So the terminator takes up one byte. So everything we need, the operator is also gonna be one byte, one character. So in this case, we need exactly 
two characters. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. Num, let's, let's call this fields, because it's not actually bytes, it's the number of fields that we're able to read. So the left operator is going to be a decimal, so we specify it using percent %d. The operand is going to be specified using percent %s. However, this is inherently insecure because if the user gives me 10 characters, it's going to try to put 10 characters in an array of size 2. So what can we do? Well, we can actually specify 2s to say, hey, we want to limit this as number. So notice it's not point 2s, it's 2s. So this is one of the confusing parts that might get a little confusing, but just think of it as a field width. So in this case, 2s is going to read two characters. So how many would we need if we stored two characters? Well, remember, we always have that null terminator. So we'd have character one, character two, followed by the null terminator. So this is where things can get a little bit awry because we created a string of only two characters. So actually, we need one. So always double check yourselves whenever you make your field widths in here because you need to restrict it. The user can type whatever they want and it's going to try to put that in that string and obviously it's going to overflow that buffer leading to either a crash or it's going to delete information that you don't want it to delete. So I'm going to put one S here and then followed by another D. Now obviously this is not outputting so we don't need a new line character or anything like that. So just like printf, now what we do is we have to put in whatever percent D needs to go in first then whatever the OP, the operator, goes into, and then finally the write. So what this is going to do is we need to tell scanf where in memory we want to put this. Because remember, all these left, right OP has a memory address. So to give it the memory address, remember we use the address of operator, and we say left, op. So why did I give it op? Well, remember that arrays are pointers themselves. So we don't want to do that. We can actually do ampersand op sub zero, but there's really no point in doing that because OP is going to be the same thing. And then finally we have the right, so we want the address of right. So the important thing to know about scanf is it doesn't actually pop into the variable itself. Instead, it pops into the memory address where that variable is. That's why we need those memory addresses, the address of the operator. Now, it's semantics, or it's just word games in this case, because remember, a variable just names a memory location. But it's important to know if we tried to do this without that, it's not going to work exactly right. So let's say num fields retrieved equals d. Okay, so what that's going to do is going to first tell us whatever scanf returns to us, and then we're going to do printf the op the left operand, the operator, and the right operand. So one thing you'll notice is even though we did one s, the print the scanf will actually put in the null ter terminator for you. And because we put one s, it will read the first character and then null terminate it, which is exactly two characters. So whenever you write your fields for s, always make sure that it's one less than the actual array size. So we have an array size of two. We want to make sure it's one less. Okay. So we'll do left op and then right. So let's take a look at what this does. So enter a value and operator another value. So just like in CN, we can separate them by spaces or we can separate them by new line characters. So I'm gonna do 10 plus 20. And what it's gonna do is number of fields retrieved is three, good, 10 plus 20. So that is how we're going to error check this. Remember we specified percent %d, percent %s, percent %d. So what if we specified something that percent %d couldn't understand? So let's say two plus 10. So let's see what happens when we did that. So number of fields retrieved equals zero, and then we get garbage because nothing was updated inside of those fields. So those are just garbage values. So one thing we have to do is, if you remember in CN, we did something like this. If not CN left op right, well then we can error check in that case. Well, the way to error check with scan F is we see how many fields that were able to be retrieved. Remember when everything was done correctly, we got three fields, that's the left, the operator and the right. So we always want to check to make sure we got that. So if whoops, a left operator and right. So notice I'm error checking this and we're just going to return negative one. Okay, so now we're not actually going to print anything out unless we got everything that we need. So let's do 10 plus 20, and it says you didn't specify an opera left or right. So that's how you're going to error check your inputs using scanf. Now notice that scanf is just like CN and it reads from the console. So scanf is analogous to printf, printf prints, where scanf scans from the console. So 
we can actually specify different places where we want these to read and write from. So all these are going to be the same, except I'm just going to write these out. We have F print F, we have F scan F, we have S print F and S scan F. Okay, so the way to bracket these is print F and scan F are just like C in and C out, whereas print F and F scan F are like uh, if streams and off streams. So F print F is going to output to a file, and actually the very first thing we specify is the file, my file. So we'll learn how to actually use files in this class a little bit later, but just know that they're all given the same name, it's just the prefix that is different. F scanf does the same thing, except where it's going to read from a file instead of the console. And then S printf, we give it a C style string that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just to show you what it's going to look like. So we're going to scan F a string from the user. Now there is a get line, but we're not going to use it. We're just going to scan a string. So what this is going to do is remember, just like CN, it's going to scan all contiguous characters until we get to a white space, which is either a tab, a space, or a new line character. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to print the value. Remember, always specify the, the size. Since we have 200, the null terminator makes it so that we have 199. So that's the maximum size. It's not going to fill everything else up if it doesn't get that. And then for printf, let's go ahead and see what we're going to get. Okay, that way there we can actually see what we get. And you'll notice that the white space actually breaks up the delim delimiters. So now what we want to do is we want to scan this just like what we did the last time. So we're going to int left, int right, and then the op. Okay, so instead of reading directly from standard input, which is the console, cn, we're going to do something like the I string stream. And what that is, is S stands for string, scan F. And then the first parameter we're going to give it is the string that we want to read from, which is value. And then the second parameter is that format string, just like what we did last time. So we're going to specify left, up, and So let's take a look what this does. So hopefully you can follow along with me. I'm error checking S scanf just like you do with normal scanf. So let's go ahead and run this and it says enter a value. Uh, let's do 50 plus 10. And it says value is 50 error. So let's take a look at what actually happened. So why are we getting error? Well, in this case, remember white space is uh, terminated for a percent %s. And so in this case, because the percent %s has uh, we're reading from the console using percent %s, it only grabbed 50. And so what's left in the stream is plus and 10. It's just like if I use cn for a string, it's not going to read everything else. And so that's why we're getting this error. So what if I did something like 50 plus 10? There we go. So now 50 plus 10, that's no white space in between. The percent %d is going to read all digits, and it reads that plus and says, oh, that's not a digit. I can't read that. Then we have that percent %s, which reads one, dig or one character, which is the plus. And then we have the percent %d, which reads the rest of the 10. So that's actually how we use F, uh, S scan F if we wanted to read from a string. We could also use S print F. To write to a string and then we'll just do print f so s print f stands for string print f and notice we get the same thing so those are the different ways where we can print so remember print f scan f are console base f print f f scan f are file base and s print f and s scan f are string base so there you go, that is C-Style I.O. in a nutshell. There's probably, you're just gonna have to play around with this and figure it out. Uh, memorization, unfortunately, the percent D, but it'll become second nature as you start using this a lot. Thanks for watching.